Oh, things are changing. I used to serve that guy coffee when I managed a coffee uh, shop. Space and the materials for your vision quest is part of the ritual, and the ritual is part of what sets you up to have to explain. Good morning, friends. Welcome. I'm starting the day off with a coffee at my favorite coffee spot here in Columbus, Ohio. Actually, I'm in Grandview today, in front of a very historical building that stops coffee sits in. It's got a lot of history here. It's called the Bank Block. It was actually the very first, what we know as today, a shopping center. It's this building right here. So all the way down the block, my favorite coffee shop right in the middle. Things are a little different now. It's usually full of people, a lot of hustle and bustle. They roast their own coffee here too, or they used to, but now they mostly roast it off-site. It smells of serious coffee roasting in here. It is awesome. It's, it's always like this. It's like one of the cooler places in Columbus. They always have the best coffee paraphernalia too. All the good French presses and the coffee. Man. I wish there was such thing as smell-o-vision where you could experience this. It is just coffee overload in here. It's awesome. Right on the other side of the coffee, in this hallway is this whole information board full of history about the bank block. Here you can see the entire block. A lot of glare, but you get the idea. I'm here at the old Franklinton Cemetery in downtown Columbus, Ohio. This is a cemetery full of history, is the oldest cemetery in all of Columbus and was used as a burial grounds long before Columbus or Franklinton was founded. Let's go pay our respects to some of the oldest residents of Central Ohio. At the very dead end of McKinley Avenue in downtown Columbus is the entrance to the old Franklinton Cemetery. Before this became a graveyard in 1799, it was used as a burial mound. Actually, Indians that used the land in this exact spot for their burial mounds. So this has been a sacred space for a very long time. A lot of people think that this is haunted. In fact, there's some ghost tours in the downtown area, like a lot of downtowns. And this is one of the main stops that everybody talks about. I've never been here before. A friend of mine reminded me of it. Glad we found it. Some of the markers are so old you can't read what they say. Some are just stones on the ground where the marker used to be. There's no church here any longer. And I say graveyard because there used to be a church here. So it would be considered a graveyard, as we learned recently from my friend Ashley in Nashville. So I'm not really sure once a graveyard transitions after a church is gone, if it's still called a graveyard or a cemetery, but here we are. And it is a very nice space and well taken care of. I think the historical society here in Columbus has something to do with this. Well, this placard about the old Franklinton Cemetery is really interesting. Between this flagpole behind me and this very large monument here in the middle of the cemetery is where the church used to stand. They used uh, some kind of electronic equipment, three different types it says, to find out where the foundation of the church was. It's a very interesting uh, story about the church. At one point it was used to store grain 
and a violent rainstorm came through, blew the roof off of it, all the grain got wet and it expanded all the walls and, and basically just blew the building up slowly. So no more church here. And now the, what's left is this beautiful historical resting place. The placard also explained that there were a lot of missing grave sites and through that electronic equipment they used, we were able to locate many of the graves that were lost or could have been lost in time. Many of the gravestones you cannot read. It's very difficult, but a lot of them do have these nice bricks that give you some information. 1834. don't look to be old, but they are new memorials to people that have passed a very long time ago, 1806, 1820, 1807. Well, it says here on the back side of this memorial that Lucas Sullivan, the founder of Franklinton, which later became Columbus, donated this land to the church. It was the first church in Columbus. 1811 is when that was dedicated, and then Lucas Sullivan was later buried right here on this, on these grounds, and then his body was then moved to Green Lawn Cemetery, which is a very large cemetery on the, on the further south side of downtown. A lot of uh, people of notoriety are buried there. We'll have to visit that cemetery another time. I've visited a lot of cemeteries, graveyards, over the last few weeks on my fantasy tour of 2020. Some of you might wonder why I'm into that. Well, I appreciate the life and death, the process and the ups and downs, the accomplishments, failures, all the stuff. It's good to think about. I talk about it sometimes. If you watch these videos, you know. Occasionally I'll fly a kite when the weather's right. It's a good way to pay respects to those gone before us. That's what I like to do. These are people that lived during the War of 1812. Some that lasted through the Civil War. Not many. This is a very old cemetery. So much history here. And then to think about the Indians and who knows how long people have been buried right here on these exact grounds. But fascinating to think about. And again, a reminder to keep things in perspective, friends. Well, if you like what you're seeing, you like these trips to pay your respects to those gone before us, you can hit like, hit subscribe, keep watching these videos. It means a lot. I appreciate you joining me, giving me company. I'll see you in the next video.